Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be covering a topic that I get asked quite often and something that has probably spawned more debate in cool guy Facebook and gun groups than maybe anything else. And that is steel body armor or ceramic body armor. What's the truth about them and what fits your needs? So as you can see, I have both sets. I have a, I actually have three sets of steel. I have one set of ceramic, and I have a set of 3A hard plates. So um, I spread the love equally and for different various reasons. Now with that said, there are camps of people out there that will just regurgitate every idiotic piece of trash that they find on the internet to support their belief or their camp of body armor that they have chosen. Now oftentimes, as we normally see with such a hotly debated item, both camps are kind of full of shit on at least one level. And this ranks right up there with only shoot steel case or only shoot brass case because steel will ruin your gun. Um, price always equals value or something better than something that's less expensive. Uh, never leave your mags fully loaded because it'll ruin your spring. Rats tourniquets don't work. PSA and OLED are just as good as the competition. These are just myths and theories thought up by people that have usually something to gain out of it. Or they've picked a camp and can't admit that maybe their arguments are somewhat flawed. Either way, I'm going to dispel probably a lot of myths that people have about both sets of body armor right here. So we're going to start with this level four ceramic uh, from Botach Tactical. I do not suggest you buy this from them. If you want to buy something on a budget, ceramic on a budget, start with LA Police Gear and work your way up. At least you will get your order and it will be correct. With that said, um, I'm going to be talking generality, so the level of this, the level four of this will not come into play, and the level three of this steel will not come into play. It will be based strictly on the characteristics of the material that is being hit by the characteristics of a projectile hitting it. So I'm going to go through my basic answer to people when they ask me steel or ceramic why to choose each one. Um, I of course can't tell you what to choose, I can only tell you the characteristics of each one. The benefits of ceramic is it is lighter weight. It is usually two to four pounds lighter per plate. It comes in higher threat level ratings than what steel does. It generally fills out because it is thicker. It generally fills out the plate bag, the portion of your plate carrier that is this is going in it generally fills that out better so it doesn't slosh around as much as steel can because it's thinner and its fragmentation is usually only a concern if it's hit on the edge because then uh, spalling or fragmentation of the ceramic will shoot outwards from the sides top or bottom now cons of ceramic ceramic has a much shorter shelf life uh, much shorter usage life than what steel does steel basically as long as you don't let it get rusty uh, will last many many moons this generally has like a five year shelf life and if you're sweating in it and it's getting uv rays or anything else like that uh, you can dramatically shorten the shelf life of ceramic ceramic is more brittle if uh, you drop your carrier like say you're taking it off out in the field and you happen to accidentally drop it boom you know lays lays down flat on a rock or something you can fracture this stuff i'm not saying it's common but it is a possibility it is slightly more expensive than steel sometimes considerably more expensive than steel and last but not least it does not take as many rounds of steel when i say that i do not mean about i'm not talking about fragmentation and all that we will get into that when i talk about steel i'm talking about if you get two or three shots within a close circumference of each other in close proximity of each other and it's anywhere near the threat level that the plate is rated for one of those shots has a pretty good chance of going through what i mean by that is sometimes you'll see five six eight ten shots capable right multi-hit well that means here 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 right all over the place if you stack rounds close to each other the ceramic the hard part starts chipping out and then you're left with usually a, a few layers of cloth and your rifle rounds especially will burn right through that as if it's not there. So steel, going to steel. <sighs> Benefits of steel plate. 
price is number one. It's, it can be significantly less expensive than ceramics and the uh, and some other lightweight options I haven't gotten into those other like polyethylene lightweight options because they are uh they are way far gone from uh the price range and they're not nearly as popular as the two these two options so price is probably number one availability through multiple vendors is probably number two uh, chances are your favorite gear vendor carries some sort of a plate it may be from the same company as maybe ar500 or something like that but nonetheless they probably have it number three multi-hit capability this can get hit and hit and hit and hit and hit and hit and hit, and hit. Um, i have a back panel that some of you guys have seen um, in other videos before that I sometimes use as a target. It no longer has any of the fragmentation coating on it, but that thing has hundreds and hundreds of rounds through it, and I would gladly wrap that thing in duct tape and put it on if I needed body armor. Why did I say wrap it in duct tape? Because in a pinch, no matter what anybody else says to you, in a pinch, a thick layer of duct tape wrapped around a steel plate can keep it from fragmenting or spalling, meaning that when a bullet hits, it splashes open and shards go this way, that way, and the other way. And that is where we get into pretty much the only two negatives, three negatives, uh, about steel. The first negative is going to be it is thinner and that even with something like a trauma pad on it, oftentimes they don't fill out the bag as well. On some carriers they do, some carriers are meant for that size, but sometimes it doesn't fill out the plate bag as well and they will slosh around. Two, weight. These are usually two to four pounds heavier, uh, depending on the plate, size of the plate. This is a 10 by 12, you have 11 by 14 and all of that. Uh, so the thickness, the fit in the carrier, uh, the weight of the plate and the third is spalling or fragmentation and this is where people start getting myth mixed up with fact you end up with kind of faceless cocky arrogant assholes online uh, who come to you and go imagine wearing body armor that will kill you AR 500 or steel body armor will in fact save your life as long as the threat rating coming or as long as the threat does not exceed the threat rating of the steel steel armor has something called a spall coating on it or fragmentation coating that is this grayish black stuff you see on here this is the base coating it's usually good for about a shot or two uh, before you start seeing a lot of spalling coming out the sides top or bottom um, you can get buildup coatings I've seen tests with buildup coatings that take many rounds five six seven eight rounds all over the thing before you really start seeing the coating cracking around the edge so it is a myth that if you get steel if you get steel body armor and you get shot that some chunk is going to come up hit you in the throat and go out the top of your head and remove your head and all the other myths and theories that people have out there about steel body armor with that said though when you have the thinnest coating the base coating the, the hit capability before spalling happens, before this stuff doesn't catch the spall, the fragmentation anymore, that hit capability is dropped dramatically. So I will always suggest that you get the buildup coating. Now there are ways to mitigate that as well, especially if you already have steel and you want to add a layer of protection. There are places, I looked this one up last night, Tactical Scorpion, I have some of their gear as well, has a basically a fragmentation bag. It has a built-in, it has a built-in uh, 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 trauma pad and the plate goes in the bag. It is, the bag is thicker and heavier than the carrier itself. So now when you get hit, the fragmentation coating has to uh, uh, fail the bag has to fail which is heavier than your carrier and your carrier has to fail before spalling or fragmentation is a concern these both have faults this has the fault where as in once it gets hit its rating drops dramatically especially if it's hit in a similar proximity a similar area to the first hit so it can take two three maybe four hits before something comes through the other side and into your body this can take far more hits, but depending on the lengths you've gone through to keep the spalling from happening, like I said, build up coating or even fragmentation bag, uh, this will take far, far more hits than what this could ever think about, than what ceramic could ever think about. This weighs more, this is lighter. 
This costs less, this is generally more expensive. At the end of it, if you're getting shot so many times that your spalling protection and your carrier itself has failed, that you are dying because of fragmentation from this, or if you're getting shot so many times that this has failed because you're getting hit so often in the same place, you've probably done more wrong than what these could handle anyway. Now that's it, everybody. That is what you need to know about ceramic versus steel. Everything else you hear, all of the horror stories about you get hit and it's gonna shear your arm off and blow your head off and all this other crap that people say about steel armor or the on the inverse, the people that have ceramic pretend nothing bad can happen where in fact, many bad things can happen with ceramic. They both have their flaws, they both have their weaknesses, but they both also have their strong suits. Just know that if one person says to you about either one that using it will cost you your life, they're full of shit. They are both life-saving pieces of equipment. They are both pieces of equipment I hope you have. They are both pieces of equipment that I've given away on this channel many times. I think everybody should have armor. And truth be told, both, both pieces of equipment come in so many various ways that there's usually a set of armor somewhere out there that fits within somebody's budget. So if you don't have any armor, go get some. I may or may not be giving away another set of armor, maybe by the end of the year. Just keep that in mind. Hopefully this helped in your journey through body armor and trying to find what's best for you. Thank you for watching. If you want to click that like button, if you've earned it, please do so. Hit the subscribe and notification bell as well. If you wanna support the channel, there's all kinds of ways down to do that below. Uh, Patreon's probably the one, the biggest one. Uh, there's affiliate links down below. There's all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna put links to a couple of different body armors that, yes, are affiliates to my channel. If you choose not to use those, go for it. If you choose to use those, they will help me. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.